During our extensive research into the Neolithic Age, explorations into the countless Stone Age ruins, which can be found all over the world, a hypothesis began to form regarding their past possible identity. However, evidence continues to mount suggesting that this was incorrect. Stone Age ruins like that of Stonehenge are all part of an existing legacy of a civilization which, according to mainstream paradigm, lived over 10 millennia ago. A people who displayed incredible capabilities, not only in the quarrying, moving, and eventual placement of many stones in excess of 100 tons. The incredible displays of earthworking, mounds and barrows formed from thousands of tons of earth, all of which was once laid atop these underground layers. All of these remarkable features are indicative of a group who were once bestowed with tremendous capabilities. Research provided by various specialist fields, alignments displaying a past, intimate knowledge of solar processions, so complex, we have only very recently been able to fully understand just how astonishing their accuracy was. For Avebury within the UK holds Neolithic lunar alignments, found to be precise down to the fifth decimal. MH felt that due to the seemingly primitive nature of many Neolithic stone buildings that, although this ancient people clearly displayed incredible abilities, their structures on the surface, however, also appear not as advanced as many other enigmatic ancient builders. Due to this, we presented a thesis that the Neolithic people were a surviving fragments of a once far more capable yet now lost civilization. We theorized that these groups, scattered across the earth, still possessed the knowledge to move said stones, yet had lost advanced technology. We have instead unearthed fitting historical details to support another, more intriguing theory. We found that many Neolithic sites, clearly constructed over extended periods of time, share uncanny similarities in their constructions to other ruins located on other continents, even displaying a somewhat deliberate, intended use of rough, uncarved stones. And the Great Salbic Kurgan is no exception. An enormous Neolithic barrow found within modern-day Siberia, although locally known as a Kurgan, this barrow, just like that of the Flintstone-esque dolmens also found across the world, is virtually identical to New Grange, a winter solstice aligned barrow we have previously discussed in several videos. Thus, with this mounting, collaborative evidence, MH's hypothesis of Neoliths, having once been surviving groups of a post-cataclysmic world, has all but been proven wrong, and they were instead the work of a once flourishing, globe-trotting civilization. It would appear that these ancient monuments were built by a once prospering, worldwide society. And just like that of the pyramids of Giza, ancient Peru, Lebanon, China, along with countless others, were all constructed by past world-conquering superpowers, who fortunately left their proverbial fingerprints all over their particular sites, with the so-claimed Neolithic Age now found to be no exception to this rule. Who were the Neoliths? How are we supposed to believe the claim that these astonishing structures were somehow created by people wielding nothing but flints and whom never made contact? How did this group align their monuments so accurately? And perhaps most important of all, what were these structures' original purposes? It is imperative that we continue to unravel that which has been successfully withheld from us for too long. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling. There are places on our planet that still contain some astonishing ruins, originating from a very distant antiquity. Quietly studied by academics the world over, and just as quietly dismissed as modern works, are from not-so-distant, more primitive ancestors. Or, if fated enough, attributed to natural activities by geologists, funded by the same infrastructure as that of the academic world, paid to explain the origins of the ruins of Earth to a particular already permitted timeline. Not only are these funded individuals directed to only attribute such sites to a certain timeline, but if they go against the grain by actually attributing them or sharing data contradicting such timelines, it is often thrown out and their funding ended, slowly drying up with their future opportunities in the field as well as their prospects and, ultimately, their reputation. Regardless of this, 
facts do not lie. And the more one explores the anomalies we present here on our channel, the more one may find themselves coming to similar conclusions as we have regarding the illogical nature and often impossibility of these advanced ancient ruins having been created using now lost knowledge or technologies, once being the work of the academically claimed culprit. Siberia is indeed one of these places, and due to the remote nature of some of the ruins found here, are easily dismissed, hidden from a modern world, battling to regain the truth regarding our past. Altai is an area that contains many ancient megaliths, so old, they are undeniably the legacy of a civilization now long lost to history. Yet this tremendous age is a double-edged sword. Not only could they eventually reveal, like done during current studies of the antiquities already covered on the channel, reveal that ruins found across the globe just don't date from a single civilization, but are, in fact, the work of separate civilizations who have presumably been and gone at different times, making the flourishment of man and indeed our eventual decline a cyclical occurrence, but due to tremendous age can also be dismissed as nothing but mere geological features, this regardless of the still remaining highly eroded evidence that can be found at such sites which is indeed indicative of artificial origins. Furthermore, there also exists a number of supposed hillsides that, just like the pyramids of Giza, have resisted the tests of time more successfully than their polygonal counterparts, meaning their undeniable shape and alignments have survived long enough for them to stick out like sore thumbs amongst a landscape which is unbalanced and predictably unaligned a background made by nature, yet their angle of descent, their ridged edges, and ultimately their artificial nature still allows one to recognize them and identify them as not only places of interest, but ancient pyramids, hidden from man for countless millennia, protected by mountain ranges and hostile, inhospitable climates, which our modern technology is slowly allowing us to rediscover regardless of a modern academia who would rather we didn't. Additionally, not only can these artificial and highly intriguing features be found here, but also possible evidence to indicate how their creators came to an untimely demise, possibly at the hands of immense heat and a possible natural disaster. Found within the nature reserve of Ergaki, among the western Sayan mountain range, is a feature that has rarely been seen, let alone photographed, an entire side of one of the mountains was, at some time within the distant past, turned to magma during an event yet to be understood. Turned to liquid magma, this stone flowed like liquid, but only for a short period before re-solidifying. A relic from a disastrous event undoubtedly packed tremendous force. Yet, whether this is evidence of the event which decimated the ancient civilization responsible for Siberia's ruins is yet to be fully known. It is a place that is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Wyoming is a very curious place when it comes to historical anomalies. It is particularly rich with peculiar oparts. The rock art that spans many millennia of man's history Handprints seemingly melted into the solid stone within the white rocks of White Mountain, or indeed, the falling block. Although the name would suggest that this block is in a precarious position, it is in fact unliberated from the bedrock, unquestionably reminiscent of the countless abruptly abandoned mines and quarries places such as Aswan in Egypt, Yangshan in China, Easter Island's El Gigante, and so on. Regardless, it is hastily dismissed as a geological formation. Its compelling characteristics, however, cannot be denied. Its unnatural shape, its level top, its out-of-place appearance, as if placed there or as if it had fallen from the sky, not to mention the curious symmetrical patterning on certain sides, the same possible tool marks we have previously identified on stones within such gigantic megalithic sites as that of Gornea Shoria, another site littered with similarly sized blocks that are also argued as natural, 
Yet the artificial characteristics present at the site would make this explanation unlikely. Located in the eastern part of the Bighorn, in a plateau northwest of the dihedral's wall, predictably little official study has been published in regard to the falling rock, although it is well known within rock climbing circles, indeed due to its symmetrical and seemingly worked shape, making it great for practice before taking on the bigger climbs. If such an object were to be located upon the surface of Mars, for example, it would undoubtedly create a flurry of interest due to its clearly artificial-esque form, yet because it is on Earth, and the truth of our past has been lost or worst hidden, it is simply ignored in favor of a more digestible and easier explanation. A dismissal of other possibilities, most probably made without any in-depth study being done on the area in line with such a hypothesis. It simply does not give one a sense of authority to say that they do not know. Additionally, during our research, we stumbled upon the medicine wheel, formerly known as the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. Paradoxically, it is argued as an indigenous artifact. This regardless of the open fact that no indigenous people have publicly claimed to have built the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. During negotiations to include the Bighorn Medicine Wheel to the Registry for National Historic Landmark and Sacred Site status, the Crow indicated that the wheel was already present when they came into the area. What do you feel about the peculiarities within Wyoming? Do you believe some were left by a lost civilization, particularly the falling rock? We find the falling rock, and indeed the history within Wyoming as a whole, highly compelling. The megalithic site of Gornaya Shoria is undoubtedly one of, if not the most incredible ancient site on Earth. Found upon the Shoria Mountains in southern Siberia, it is a place that has long been argued by influential academics and funded geologists as merely being a natural formation which, simply by chance, appears to have once been an artificially constructed site. The reason for this denial of any artificial origins is unquestionably due to the size of some of the stones which make up the site, with the heaviest that academics have noted reaching far into several thousand tons in weight. This would make it the largest megalithic site discovered in the world if one could find any compelling evidence of the site once having an artificially constructed origin. Additionally, if proved to have an artificial origin, the erosion present on such enormous blocks would be indicative of a civilization which existed many, many millennia ago. Russian media, along with many other funded outlets and institutions, by default, have to deny that these stones could ever have been created via artificial means. This is due to the long-attested timeline for man, and the subsequent protection of the true past of our species, a timeline which spans much further into the past than currently claimed, one which I am systematically uncovering upon my channel. Popular news outlets have regularly presented articles written by Russian scientists who, predictably, concluded that this rock formation be the result of geological processes associated with the intense weathering of the rock, comprising Mount Inshoria. Both tectonic forces acting on deeply buried bedrock and pressure release that occurs within near-surface bedrock uplifted the eroded stones, which they claim that this supposedly commonly forms rectangular block-like rock formations that consist of jointed rocks. However, as the site has become more and more well-known, within circles not bound by the chains of mainstream academic funding, and thus free to investigate the idea of the area indeed once having been artificially created, evidence of this incredible reality. Compelling characteristics of this ancient site has recently been discovered which I feel is overwhelming evidence of the site indeed once having been an ancient settlement. This reality, although simply impossible for any loyal academic to admit to, is one that these recently discovered stones proves beyond doubt not only were these stones clearly cut using lost ancient stone cutting technology, but has left a signature mark upon the stone, uncannily similar to that in which I have named the Cyclopean Civilization. 
These same signature tool marks can be found upon the unfinished obelisk of Aswan, Egypt, and also the most important link I feel I have ever researched, Basda Caves, which has not only been academically admitted as the ancient quarry for the stones of Haran, but due to the most peculiar design of these blocks, has enabled me to link the site to not only Gornaya Shoria, but countless other seemingly impossible as yet unexplained ancient ruins all over the globe. These blocks found at the site are not only of an enormous scale, but are undoubtedly artificially cut using some form of stone-cutting technology created by a lost civilization. These stones, I feel, not only prove the site's artificial origins, but due to the pattern left by the tools which work them into the shape that they are today, was built by the same civilization responsible for Baalbek, which also contains stones which are well over a thousand tons in weight, the unfinished obelisk, which is also well over a thousand tons. Yet this site is unquestionably now the largest currently recognized to still be in existence here upon our planet, with only the megaliths of Yangshan Quarry that unfortunately were left unliberated topping them in weight, with the largest at the quarry reaching far over the 16,000 tons mark. Yet the site has still not been fully explored, so there is a high chance that some of the stone in Gornaya Shoria may even top that of the blocks of Yangshan Quarry. These stones are unquestionably an incredible valuable find, and regardless of academia's deliberate ignorance in regards to such discoveries, has finally vindicated all those claimed as fringe researchers as having been right on the money with their astonishing claims of it once having been man-made, a claim now proven to be a reality. Not only is Gornaya Shoria one of the most incredible sights on Earth, but it is unquestionably highly compelling. To truly understand the astonishingly true history of the unfinished obelisk, one must first wade through a quagmire of well-financed fallacy, infested with many a false prophet, incomplete or simply illogical conjecture, all of which defended by countless academic figures of institutions of influence and power, acquired via the funding in their defense of a form of mass worship of academics' perception, as if an all-knowing authority. So, with things like the obelisk, for example, one begins to wonder if this all be by design. Since academic records of this monument began, no one who has described it, predictably, has ever managed to wrap their head around how such a stone could have possibly ever been moved. Ergo, all well-funded explorers, reporters, and journalists alike, with the expectant pressure of their return with a deciphered mystery. It would appear this explanation never arose, yet was skillfully averted. Firstly, the rock had indeed been abandoned abruptly at some point in history, conveniently allowing academia to make nearly all those interested in the obelisk overlook this eventual intention by its original creators, a distraction made by a fault line. Chris Dunn, an independent investigator held in varied regard, found that details of decoration were already being added to the stone as it was being hewn, running exactly through this so-called fault, disproving this so long-held academic fallacy. Yet, alas, although the unfinished obelisk lay still attached to the strata of Earth, like that of the larger of the two megaliths in Yangsham Quarry, the largest some 16,000 tons, academia is not required nor would even attempt to provide any logical explanation as to how these blocks would have been moved. Additionally, however, and perhaps most revealing, is the pregnant lady of Lebanon, a 1,000-plus ton megalith, so large that just like that of the unfinished obelisk, no attempt was ever made to explain the ancient civilization responsible could have moved such stones to their final placements. Yet, remarkably, the proverbial nail in the coffin and vindication of our claim was the excavations made around the pregnant woman, recently revealing that this stone was not abandoned on a slight incline, as claimed, 
but was placed atop another stone of even bigger proportions, suggesting it was part of a once enormous structure and exposing this reoccurring academic strategy when it comes to dismissing the controversial. It is a reality which we find incredibly annoying. Along with the many other currently unexplained feats of engineering present within the ancient ruins of Baalbek's temples, is undoubtedly the variety of ancient stones that were somehow incorporated into the structures. Although modern academia, and indeed its supporters, who are all seemingly suffering with selective research syndrome, claim that Baalbek is a Roman ruin, we feel, as mentioned, the sheer size of the ancient megaliths that were installed masterfully into its construction are obviously far too large for our Roman ancestors to have transported from distant quarries and who have installed into the structure. We are more than open to this proposition that they were indeed installed and built by Romans, if we can be provided with one single logical explanation as to how this was done. But, as of yet, this remains elusive, absent any academic explanation as to the site. As mentioned, the astonishing array of ancient stones is also an area that is rarely covered by individuals attempting to convey an air of all-knowing to the masses, as these features are, just like the enormous megaliths present at the site, currently unexplainable. Specifically, it's the pink granite columns. The reason for our focus on these particular stones is the fact that this pink granite is only available at one known ancient quarry, that being the famous quarry of Aswan, located within modern-day Egypt, an astonishing 1,500 kilometers away. Some of these stones, weighing in at more than 10 metric tons, this achievement, we feel, is clear indication of the fact that the builders of these ancient sites were far more capable than that of our more recent Roman ancestors. For example, as previously covered on our channel, Henri Layard brought two Lamassu weighing in at a similar size around 10 tons to London. This task took over 18 months of arduous suffering for hundreds of our modern ancestors, placed a mere century ago to complete. It included several near disasters, and included loading them onto wheeled carts, complex systems of modern pulleys and levers operated by dozens of men, the utilization of over 300 men in total, a barge, and a custom-built ramp to haul them up the steps and into the museum. How these same curators, historians, and academics alike can continue to claim that our Roman ancestors completed such tasks along with the placement of such enormous stone megaliths, is to us absurd. Was the unfinished obelisk found within Aswan the work of the same civilization? We feel that these pink granite columns could in all possibility be a link that connects these two ancient sites, and in particular, the Great Pyramids. Was Baalbek, with its enormous granite megaliths, built by the same people as the Great Pyramids? Is the giant megalithic exoskeleton of the Great Pyramids, which we have already exposed, built with the same techniques as Baalbek? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. <laughs>